Um, I'm starting off with the topical piece first and then moving on to the other things. One of the things that happened overnight and therefore oil and gas comes firmly into play, right? Sort of is uh, uh, this whole thing around PNGRB doing this. Plus, but beyond that, we're seeing oil prices uh, being very, very contained. Now, uh, to the regulatory piece, secondly, but first, the virtue by virtue of the fact that oil prices have come off so much, how does that, if at all, change the picture of the outlook towards different components within this space? Right. So, um, firstly, in terms of if you look at the, the downstream oil marketing companies and if you look, say, a month back when oil was close to the, the late 80s or 90 dollars, there was this concern that these companies are now losing money on fuel pricing, that's petrol, diesel. And um, there was a general view that maybe after elections, uh, if there's no major surprise, these guys can come and take a price hike. Now, maybe a petrol diesel price hike at this point of time is unlikely, but it's now not even needed. So in a way, we've, you know, since the OPEC events, etc., oil prices have come off. They're now at a fairly comfortable level in the late 70s, which is quite comfortable from the marketing margin for petrol and diesel. So I think if oil continues to remain in this range, which is uh, cities, commodities view, our global view, say it's in the mid to late 70s, then that's pretty comfortable uh, for the oil marketing companies. So we retain our constructive stance there. Um, the stocks that we like there are BPCL and HPCL, so we have a buy there. Um, I think the market may still await some bit of political clarity, some sort of um, you know, clarity on policy on some of these stocks because ultimately they do fall under the quote unquote PSU category and petrol diesel fuel pricing we know is generally politically sensitive. Uh -huh. So maybe the market might adopt a slightly more um, you know, pragmatic approach towards some of these. But on the gas side where things are not so politically sensitive and since uh, you alluded to that, uh, we are a lot more constructive. So we like stocks like Gale, uh, city gas names like IGL, MGL. So, um, you know, there is, um, now that the elections are done, the NDA actually has a majority uh, in the GST council. So uh, maybe petrol, diesel are a lot more difficult to bring <laughs> under GST, but gas is clearly possible. We think um, it can happen. Timelines are always very difficult to judge, obviously. But the whole value chain benefits, um, you know, the government has this target of increasing gas usage in the economy. And if they do manage to pull this off, um, then you know stocks like Gale and some of the gas distributors uh, should benefit. There are also some moves around the, on the regulatory side, which in our view works in favor of some of these stocks. So overall, our constructive view on the gas space uh, remains intact. Mm. So some moves which may come, but based on what you've heard thus far, and if indeed the GST council moves, you think Gale is a principal beneficiary, or Gale plus the city gas distributors kind of? Uh, on earnings basis, if such a thing would happen, would be equal beneficiary? Yeah, so in our view, Gale actually has a direct earnings benefit mm. because there are certain stranded taxes uh, for Gale because they use gas internally and those may be stranded taxes, they may be able to you know, now get the tax credit. Whereas for the gas distributors, it could be a direct earnings benefit or it could be indirect in terms of you know, general more gas usage in the economy, which helps their volumes. So our pecking order is Gale uh, and then the gas distributors like IGL, MGL, but these are our three main buys in the, in the space. Got it. I'm going to come back to you on telecom as well, uh, by the way. Uh, 